Hey, what's going on guys? It's Get This Here 101, and today I'm going to show you guys how to disassemble your PS3 controller. It is the 6-axis DualShock 3, so that means there is vibration in this controller. This is the newer controller, so yeah, let's get started. What you're going to need is your controller itself, as well as two screwdrivers. You're going to need a small screwdriver. That's how small mine is, and yeah. So we're going to use this one first, and on the back, if you turn it to the back, you have five screws, and you want to unscrew all five of those. Okay, so once you've unscrewed all five of the screws, I want to say, when you're unscrewing these screws, you want to be very patient with them, because these screws are easy to strip down and kind of wash away. So after you've done that, you can just dump it out just like this and they should all fall out accordingly so we have one two three four we have four screws out we just need to get this middle one in out so just dump it out kinda like that and so we have our five screws right here so you want to set this aside you don't want to lose them and I'll set them aside on the side right here okay so once you've unscrewed your uh, screws here you're going to take your PS3 controller and turn it over on its back again. And to open this controller, you want to push down, push down from here and kind of open it, unclamp it. Because there is a clamp there that kind of attaches it. So you just kind of work it like that. And be patient. Uh, if this is your first time opening the controller, you're going to have a really hard time. But just be patient with it because it's been clamped there for a pretty long time and it hasn't ever been opened. So once you kind of opened it like this, you want to kind of slide it out, work your way because this shield right here, and there's the clamp. So the back piece is off and we can set that aside. Next up we have our battery. You want to always unplug your battery first because you don't want to get anything damaged while you're uh, opening your controller. So with your battery you just flip it on its side, it's like this, you flip it like this and you use kind of your nails to grab onto this white thing so just like this make sure you grab on the white thing you do not want to grab on the wires and strip and uh, break them because that means you won't have any battery connected to your controller and there you go so you're taking out the battery and you can put that aside as well finally you want to take out the rumbles uh, before you do that we have a screw right there on the circuit tree of the circuit board you make sure you do not want to take out the circuit board while that screw is on or else you'll break your controller and with the dual shock you're only going to need one screwdriver which is this so you do not need this screwdriver you only need this screwdriver if you're using it for your six axis no rumble so you want to take your screwdriver and unscrew it like that Again, be very patient if this is hard to take out because your first time taking out the controller, everything is not loose and you do not want to strip your screws. So once you've done that, you can also put this aside. Make sure you know that this is the one that goes to your circuit board and so just keep it away from the other screws that you've unscrewed. So I'll put that right there. And now you can just take your circuit board out. So you just take it like this and you pull it right out just like so and now that you have your rumbles connected you want to take out this uh, carriage right here so how you do that is just take your rumble packs and pull them right out and it should come out just like so now this is what it what just fell out was my shoulder stick buttons for the right and left number one it doesn't matter which side this goes to just as long as it fits with the number facing the way it's supposed to be like that so we'll put that aside and we have our front panel with all the buttons taken out already uh, one thing to mention when you're opening it this may fall off you do not want to lose this this helps you press on your d-pad so that you have responsiveness on your d-pad and with the numbers and buttons we have them right here and we can put these aside as well. With the PSN button, you're gonna have this as well as a ring. I want I don't want you guys to lose this ring. Let me show you guys right here. Fortunately, I do not have it. Um, I think I just lost the ring, but 
Um, just precaution, I don't want you guys to lose the ring. Apparently, I just did. And there should be a ring on here. But I lost it and I cannot show you guys. Sorry, just do not lose that. You're going to need that. I will find that later. Okay, so now once you've gone to this part, what you can do is you can just take off your analog sticks, just pull them off, and they come off just like this. So put those aside. And here. Next up, we have our carriage thing. Let me show you guys right here. So your rumble packs are connected to your circuit board. So you want to take these rumble packs out. What you can do is you just push them straight out. Kind of like this. They're kind of easy to push. And the other one, just push them straight out. And now all you have is your circuit board and your pad. Okay, so with the circuit board, there's nothing you can take off. Uh, just make sure you do not make sure you, these rumble packs do not break off these soldering points. If they do, do not panic because what you can do is just resolder them if you have a soldering gun. But just if you don't, make sure these don't pull them off. So we can set this aside. That's finished. And with the deep, with the pad right here, we have the pad itself. And on the pad here, we have these notches right here. What you can do is you just turn it around and it'll come straight off. Same with the other side, and it'll come straight off. Also, we have one in the middle. Um, I'm having a bit of trouble taking this pad off, but yeah, there is a groove in there that you have to take off. You can see from the back, it's kind of notched in there, but I am not going to do that because I don't need to do that. If you do need to do that, you can, and that's just used for modding. So to put these back in, you just kind of, there's a hole right there and you just put it back into that hole. Same with the other side, put it in the hole, and there you go. Okay, um, a lot of you guys have this problem, and that's when you are taking off your R2 buttons. Uh, I recommend you don't take them off, but if they do eventually fall off, this is how they come off. So here you kind of have like a latch thing, and it's latched onto it. Let me show you guys. So pretend your R2 button falls off, uh, what you need is on the R2 button there's this spring thing Let me show you guys right here. So there's a spring thing and you want to put that back just like this and On the button itself What you do is you want to get this spring notched into here notched right in There and you will see that there's two hooks this two hooks will hook onto here and here so we will do that right now and I'll show you guys right here. So first off you want to get the wire notched into the thing itself. Just like that. And then you get the two hooks and you just put them there. And how you know it works is when you press on it, it will press the button and you will see it react. So your R2 button's oh on top. And that's how you want to uh, reinstall your R2 buttons if they happen to fall off while you are disassembling your controller. Okay, so that is how you disassemble your controller, guys. Thank you for watching. This Get This Here 101. If this video helped you, please give it a thumbs up. And if it didn't, please give it a thumbs down and tell me what any questions you need on um, how to disassemble this controller. Thank you guys for watching. This Get This Here 101. I'll see you guys in the next video.